Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, it goes from bad to worse for CBS's The Talk, while Bethany Frankel proves she really is a big shot. We have it all in The Hot Dish. Then I love when we can make dreams come true, and today is another one of those days. Producer Ted's dream of driving an ice cream truck is happening today, so get your money ready. And from that Formula One show to Minnesota salads, y'all have a lot to say this week. Leo, open up the mailbag. Here we go. And we're opening the Jason Show mailbag. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning, Egan. Good morning, right here in Eden Prairie. And good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my. See, I said it. Now people think we. Someone wrote that they wonder if we really are related. I'm still going to say it. My sidekick sister from another mister, right there. We're not related. And the Minnesota Zoo's otter, otter caretaker, Kendall Mark, everybody. Oh, wouldn't that be a dream? No, otters are mean. Oh. I learned that at the Minnesota Zoo. I did a piece, and I mm-hmm. thought, oh, look, they're cute, yeah. they're little otters. No, no. Uh, they're, they're vengeful little rodents. They're, they're very mean. Oh. They're just, well, I don't know if they're okay. vengeful. I don't know why I use that term. But angry little guys. They're angry little rodents. They just, like, lay on their back and float all day. No. Nope. What they'd be so mad about. They're, they're mean, though. I did find that out. They're mean. Oh. How you doing? Okay. I mean, I'm doing well, but you just threw me for a loop right there with that I'm sorry one. about that. I feel, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay, though. Okay. It's going to be nice this weekend. So it's going to be happy. great. Mm-hmm. I know. And I, um, it's so my mother, uh, the Dar, uh, you know, one of the things I'm most grateful for is the fact that she has taken COVID seriously. Mm-hmm. She's a proud resident of Earth One. Mm-hmm. And so she hasn't left, you know, she hasn't found a house yet here. We'll get to that. But she hasn't found a house. So she's been staying inside the place where she's staying for about, well, how long has it been? 16 months or what? I don't know. Anyway, so now that she's, she's as of Wednesday, she's fully vaccinated. She got her, she's two weeks out from her second dose. And so now she's vaccinated. So we went yesterday to run by to see her. And uh, she comes out and I go, hey, you know, talking. And I said, uh, hey, I said, I can't wait to take you to out to eat or I can't wait to take you to play pool tabs or something. She goes, Oh, well, I saw in your news about the Venezuelan uh, variant. And I go, you can't worry about, worry about the Venezuelan variant. I need, you, we, we, I need you to get you out. I, I need you to go get a plate of nachos with me. Mm-hmm. I need you to play some pull tabs with mm-hmm. me. She's all worried about. I said, stop watching our news. I shouldn't have Turn told her. Turn it off. Stop, stop watching the news. <laughs> as long I mean, as she doesn't get her news from Facebook, I'm fine. Right, Did right. you hear about the crocodile that had, uh, you know, don't. Yeah. Don't. Don't do that. Um, but, I mean, maybe she'll go outside and pull pull tabs with you. Is that like a thing? Can you, I mean, this is an honest question. Can you do pull tabs outside? Or do you have to be in the building? You have to be in the building. You can't walk out with a ticket. You have to, you have to <laughs> pull the ticket there. And if you, yeah, you can't leave the building oh, with Ted a pull. Ted said they blow away. So there's no, no legal no. ramifications. No, but you can't leave the away. premises. You have to open it okay. right there in front of the, the pull pace. tab w- woman or man. Oh, so, okay. So, anyway. But I told her, I said, I'm taking you out to eat. Yeah. I don't care. Don't yeah. worry about the Venezuelan, you know what I mean? I mean, worry. I take it seriously, but right. still. Right. I want her to have fun. I want to, sh- I want to show her off. I- and she got a new haircut, too. Oh, girl. Her hair, she's been like Rapunzel since she, <laughs> she hasn't cut her hair in like a year and a half. Right. So she got her hair cut yesterday. I said, you got a new haircut. Yeah. You got new clothes. Yeah. You got the shots. Feeling yourself. Let's go get some nachos. Right. Or whatever. Or whatever. You know? Yeah. Speaking of food. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go. You know what's going to happen right now, too. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get an email. Jathan, don't pressure your mother. I just, I, I'm, I know I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that before the show's over. Jason, don't shame your mother. If I didn't shame, I wouldn't have a show. Mm-mm. The slow destruction of CBS's The Talk continues following the firings of Sharon Osbourne and now the leave of absence by Kerryanna Naba. The talk is now the worst 
rated show in daytime TV. According to Soap Opera Network, ratings for the talk have dropped so low, it now ranks 13th on a list of national talk shows. Making matters worse, there are only 13 shows on that list. <laughs> ratings were already bad before the Sharon debacle, uh, and now with Sharon out, Carrie Ann on leave, there are only three co-hosts left. And the only one that people really know is Cheryl Underwood. I love Cheryl. Mm -hmm. But the other two are new this year. Mm -hmm. And no offense to them. Right. But the vast majority of the audience still is getting to get to know them. They don't know them. Right. So there's no, there's no buy-in. Mm -hmm. It's not good for talk shows. No. I love the, I, bravo, Ted. 13 out of 13. 13 <laughs> out of 13. 13th on the 13 people long list. Not good. What I've heard too is that they were down there though before they fired or she left allegedly um, Sharon Osbourne. They, it was all, the, the ratings were already <laughs> falling. Yeah. They were already dipping, dipping, dipping. They, you know, there was a time uh, to give them credit. There were a few seasons where they were competitive with our time slot competitor, The View. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't watch them. No. Just yelling. No. That's what this sh the show, we don't yell. Well, some days, but not. Do we? Well, you can do we make yell. that promise? Yeah. No, we can't really make that promise. No. Some days. I mean, days. you yell at me, I yell at you. That's yeah. it. But it's fun yelling. But it's about like Star Trek. Exactly. They're yelling at very important. They're, they're not talking about Star Trek over there, but, no. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my point being is they were already in trouble, and yeah. now they're really in trouble, which leads me to say what I've said before. If I were CBS, if I was running CBS, I would just cancel it. Pull the, just come on, just just end it, and put do a re, bring back uh, the newlywed game, bring back uh, Hollywood Squares. Anything. Bring back uh, game shows. Bring uh, people love game shows. Mm -hmm. the, our other time slot competitor, The Price Is Right, it's killing it. It's been killing it since the 70s. Is that number one still, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, and then the views up there. Mm -hmm. We do beat the view uh, here, but anyway, yeah. Thank you for that. You heard it hey, here. we take pride when yeah. a local show, you know, and we're we're all over the state, but I mean, we're in a few other cities. But when a local show can beat a national show like The View with millions of dollars in budget mm -hmm. and big old guests, we have a huge budget too. Obviously, we do. Look at us. I mean, look at this. We have Juice Newton for crying out loud. They I don't. mean, that's right, right there. Look. The View doesn't have a bear. No. Doesn't have a bear named Juice Newton. Uh -huh. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Speaking of another show, Bethany Frankel's new one, The Big Shot with Bethany, is now available on HBO Max. Before I give you my thoughts, and I have thoughts, uh, look at the trailer. Work. I'm a serial entrepreneur. We're building multiple brands at the same time. Are there any markets you won't do? Um, porn, firearms, I can't think of that many. I need a vice president of operations. It's a big job. You have to like understand e-commerce, licensing, social media. I hate social media. I hate it too. <laughs> I need somebody to run this <laughs> circus. I'm a mover, shaker, money chaser, raise New York City. This is gorgeous. <laughs> First impressions are paramount. If I get this job, then I'm gonna have to make a really hard decision. I'm gonna no. Have I think you have to make a hard decision now. Oh, you should take a cocktail and make a life decision in a really short period of time. Spoiler alert, okay, that, that interaction right there. So the, the first episode opens and Bethany is having a cocktail party for the 10 contestants. Well, I shouldn't say contestants. Her and her team have whittled down the applications to these 10 people. Mm -hmm. And that woman, here's the only real spoiler I'm gonna give. So that woman that you saw, she runs a fashion sock company. Like, like this in like your footwear? She has an obsession with socks with sandals. So she has a fashion sock company. And she makes the horrible mistake in that interaction with Bethany of saying, I, uh, I'm gonna run both. I'll run your company and I'm gonna run my fashion sock empire. To which, what do you think Bethany said? Why are you here? I, I know, I, there, is no, there is no second thing here. This, I, I'm gonna be your life. If you don't like that, get out of here. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, this ain't The Bachelor. Uh, the eliminations come fast and furious. <laughs> Bethany doesn't mess around. I love this. Bottom line, I love it. The only thing that I do not love is the fact that I wouldn't let any of these yahoos uh, run Ted's ice cream truck. 
and my friend Alexis watched it, and we had the same thing. You walk, and I think, I don't think, Bethany even says it. This is another, Bethany, forget the format of the show, Bethany don't care. Within about 30 minutes of the first episode, Bethany is kind of questioning, like, do any of these people have what it takes? They're all lackadaisical. One of the women come, comes to work in a halter top. I mean, that's how I mean I. That's how I got my job here at Channel Nine. But I mean, but I mean that was like a few years ago, so yeah. it was fine then. But no, she came, and Bethany's like she's wearing what? Right. And it's a pleather, a pleather halter like a cut up, a crop like top. Like the kids are not halter top, crop top. Oh. Yeah. Is this like a big important job or? Is um, it's like a, a vice president of her company. Yes. What? And these people got in the top ten of the interview. We should have. Why? No, 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 no. Bethany, I could never. No, no, no. Oh. She she will eat you. And you see that. Oh. It's good, though. There's two episodes out, everybody. I think you'll like it if you like The Apprentice, if you like Martha, if you like stuff like that. It's on HBO no, uh, Max, not regular HBO. Okay. HBO Max. We have a lot more to come. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. I don't know why I did that, but I did it. The party continues next. When you wish upon a star, Dax Holt makes your dreams come true. But this is what Disneyland looks like when it is at 25%. He got a ticket to the opening of Disneyland, and he's taking us along on his magical day. Then, want to really impress mom this Mother's Day? We're going to show you how to make a fancy quiche at home that will definitely impress. And bomb pop anyone? Producer Ted is leaving the Jason Show control room for a career as an ice cream man. Go get some ice cream and maybe a cup of coffee, because we are just getting started. Let's go through the details of a cartwheel. Your front leg is really your foundation, because that's really going to and then this leg will just follow. Mm -hmm. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. Like that action, if that makes sense. Should I go lose some weight and come back? <laughs> no, I've seen all people do cartwheels. We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> OK. All right. Give it 110%. 110. Mm-hmm. <laughs> OK, so let's evaluate oh, that. Oh. Let's look at that again in slow motion if we can. Although that was in slow motion, so I don't think we have That was in slow motion. <laughs> don't want to go down like that? That's exactly how I'm going to do it. That's exactly. All right, let me give it a try. Song. All right, Jimmy. Go, Jimmy. OK. Let's go, Jimmy. Oh. That was. That's what a piece looks like uh, we have coming up on Tuesday. Me playing tennis. That's what that looks like. Did you wear that outfit too? No, but I think my shorts fell down during the, sh uh, <laughs> the mic I was wearing, like these tennis oh, shorts. Oh, you're being serious. I'm being very serious. And I had <laughs> the mic pack was weighing it down, and I went to serve. Yeah. And it was like a Three Stooges routine. <laughs> anyway, do you see the NBA draft yesterday? Or the NFL draft? Did he just say that? Do you think Aaron Rodgers is really leaving? Well, he actually knew something, but we started with NBA draft, and then I stopped listening. Hey, I, I, I corrected. Do you think he's really leaving? Um, I think he really wants to. I don't yeah. think he's going to be oh, allowed to Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being yelled at in my ear by Ted. He goes, next story, Ted, Jason. Ted which, let like me that. tell you, mm -hmm. Ted has never said in my ear. Producer Carl, every four seconds. Move on, Jason. Move on. Mm -hmm. Ted never said that to me. He's a Packers fan. Well, if the Packers would give him a, a decent a defense, he wouldn't be looking to pack his backs. Who is this? And where, where are you getting this information? Um, I am a well-rounded homosexual. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Name of the show. It'll be right on there. his tombstone, a yeah. well-rounded homosexual. <laughs> That's what, that will be on my tombstone, Jace. Well-rounded homosexual. How about Mac Jones, that kid? Where did he go? Oh my He's God. from Alabama, right? Stop talking. Next in the dish. <laughs> Starting today, Disneyland in California is open for business. But our insider to the stars, Dax Holt, 
got early access yes, got early access yesterday. I have not seen this. And it was one of the first people through the gates. Let's look at this. Jason, I just wanted to apologize for not being able to make your show today. Just had a pretty busy day ahead of me and I apologize. Uh, but I promise, I promise I will be there next week. Um, and again, I am, I am so, so sorry. Hey Jason, I'm back. And, I, and I'm only showing you this for, for news reasons. But this is what Disneyland looks like when it is at 25%. I am, I am so sorry you are not here. Jason, I'm back. This is what Indiana Jones line looks like. I just, I'm purely just here to let you know that there is literally no one at Disneyland. You really should have come today. This was a fantastic day to come. That's all, over and out. I'll see you, back to you, Jason. Jason, Jason, I'm back. I just wanna let you know, we got the whole Indiana car to ourselves. Are you there? <laughs> All right, Jason, I'm reporting live from Disneyland here. Your man on the street. And I just need to show you the cutest thing ever. Tell me that isn't the cutest thing ever. All right, Jason, one last check-in for here on Main Street. You know, I'm sure that you've been very upset with me today as I did my tour of Disneyland without you. Um, but I thought you would like to know something that I've been upset about, something that I've been hurting about. My legs. My legs have been dying today. There's not been a single line this entire day, so I've just had to keep walking straight to the front of rides over and over and over again. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I've already ridden every single ride there is at Disneyland. So please, please pray for me. Hopefully next time you can make it. <laughs> Look at this. Literally no one's here. No one. All right, I, I will stop now. I will, I will stop being a jerk. Bye, Jason. Yes? I hate you. Mm -hmm. That's mean. That was just torturous. I'm thoroughly enjoying it because for once, I'm not fired. Dax, Dax is. is fired today, I know. Mm -hmm. That's great. Hey, he's Mr. Anaheim. He deserves to be there. He's, he did, he's done stuff for the city. And all kidding aside, I, I'm glad they reopened it safely because it decimated that economy that's the, you know, the, the, everyone got, you know, not everyone, but a good chunk of them got their jobs back. Mm -hmm. it, it's the engine, it's the straw that stirs the drink in that city. Right. And it's good to see them open back up, you know? Right, and I how fun would that be? A 25% capacity, especially if you've been there. Yeah. If you're willing, you know, with everything going on, if you're like, hey, I feel safe, I feel good. You don't have to wait in a line? No, and that's <gasps> the thing. You cannot have lines, it just makes yeah. Disney World Disneyland, where whatever Disney makes it that much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless you're with some people. And then next in the dish, Billie Eilish is out with her latest uplifting dance song. Don't be rude. I'm sorry. Don't be rude. I, I, I didn't write that. Not really. But she does have new music. Her second studio album is coming out this summer, and she just dropped the music video for Your Power, and it features a really large snake. And how could you? Will you only feel bad when they find out if you could take it all back? Would you try not to abuse your power? I know we didn't choose to change. You might. I, let me say something positive, not just snarky. She's immensely talented. You know what, I, I'm envious of songwriters. I really am, I say it all the time. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. 
they're all starting to sound the same. I'm sorry, it's just how I feel in my heart. All of her songs are starting to sound like that. And do we need the big snake? That creeps me out a little bit. Do you have something to say? I know you're on the other side of this because you love her. I do. The one million, or wait, 10 million, 20 billion? I don't know how many people. She's number one on YouTube right now with this video, so we would all disagree with you, all of us. So is a kid making a castle out of, of, of tuna fish, but it doesn't mean it's good. I mean, just because you're number one on YouTube does, I mean, look, I'm not take. I just said that she's great. She is immensely talented. She takes risks, okay? Okay, that doesn't hear me sound out. risky to me. Hear me out. Okay, you're hear right. Me out. Let okay. me be quiet. So the Billboard Top 100 right now, their top 10 tracks, someone sings within five to 10 seconds, right? Which is what's catchy. You're like, right away, you're into it, right? She doesn't sing for the first like 40 seconds of this song, and it's still a good song, and it's still number one video on YouTube right now, trending. That's not taking chances. What if, what if we came out of our open? <laughs> What if, and if we had a different system, I could just ask for the open to be rolled again, mm -hmm. but we can't because it's like Flintstones. Right. But, uh, but what if we, what if we came out of our opening credits and didn't speak for 45 seconds? Do we have it? We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. See? You can't even last 15 seconds. Because I have a lot of thoughts, okay? <laughs> I can't be quiet for that long. But 45 seconds, if I'm listening to the radio, mm -hmm. okay? Now uh -huh. humor me here. I humored. If I'm listening to the radio, mm -hmm. and I'm in, there's no one singing for 45 seconds, you know what? Radio off. I'm turning to Kathy Werzer. Um, excuse me, but a lot of classic songs don't have people singing for a really long time and they become classic songs. That's my whole point is that she's doing something different than what everybody else is doing right now. Okay. You're right. Oh my gosh. Executive producer Jeff just like exasperated, <laughs> like sighed But I at just me said you're right. I just said you're absolutely right. Thank you. You've changed my mind. See? You did not. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> Shot by Adam, one of the best. Summer is almost here, and that means the summer job application process is underway. While some people may want to be a lifeguard or, I don't know, camp counselor, producer Ted has other dreams, including driving an ice cream truck. He recently visited one of our favorite places, Minnesota Ice Cream, to see if he has what it takes. And that means it's time for 67% of America. Loves Ted. What made you apply to work on our food truck? I've always secretly wanted to drive an ice cream truck. And this is, this is the dream come true right here. The ice cream dream. It is. Some might say. Yes. Do you have a valid driver's license? I need proof of your valid driver's license. When was the last time you were pulled over? This is an expired driver's license, sir. The proof. Seems legit. Are you nervous? No. You should be. How would you rate your driving skills? 10. How fast can you run? Very fast. How much can you bench press? Uh. How comfortable are you being covered in glitter? Is there a lot of glitter in ice cream cones? At Minnesota Ice Cream, there is. Ooh. It's your lucky day, Ted. <laughs> We're going to make your dreams come true. Oh, yeah. Luckily, I got my license renewed yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I thought that was a lie. Are you ready? Let's do this. See what you got. Let's do this. <laughs> I got to do one thing first, though. All right, go ahead. Jump in. Oh, oh. Wrong way. Uh, Close enough. So what's the course here? Um, we're going to go down the parking lot, and we're going to weave in and out of those light posts. Do not hit anyone, especially children. 
Don't break the. There we go. Drive. I'm just guessing that we're yep. gonna drive. Let's see if you did it. There we go. Guess it. Oh. And slowly. Oh. And then the turn. You have to turn pretty sharp here. Oh All right. There we go. All right, kiddies. You want some ice cream? Who wants some ice cream? Uncle Ted is here. And braking. Oh Slowly my gosh. Catch some pedestrian. The brakes are almost like, we're not sure if we're gonna brake. And then we're gonna loop around that post and pull in where Ronnie is there so we can load up the truck and get her ready for the event. So most days we'd be out driving around, feeding people ice cream, but the truck was booked. So we're coming inside where I'm going to live out my dream of serving up ice cream. Now I gotta get trained. Wash them real good. What's the purpose of this? Washing hands? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know this, I don't know if you can have the job. We have some people to give ice cream to. That's pretty cool. You're on. Okay. You ready? You ready to do this? Let's do this. You've never pulled the cone before, but I'm really confident no. in your skills. All right. All right, so. And there's the puppy. Dogs get free ice cream here, so oh, they do. can't mess that one up. Chocolate ice cream. Absolutely not. <laughs> and then do slow circle, slow, slow, and release. Look at that! Oh, perfect. Wow. wow. And you're going to want to sort of push it. Oh, you're making oh, a mess. You're making a mess. I'm sorry. We try to not cross contaminate right. here. We're lighting marshmallows on fire right And obviously, here. if it starts on fire, you're not going to blow it out with your mouth. That's an obvious. So what's the worst case scenario here? That he melts the glove to his skin when he is lighting the, the marshmallow with the torch. That would be the worst case scenario for sure. Uh, Very nice. No one likes a burnt marshmallow. That's a little yeah. underdone. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Uh, Turn it off. And how are we going to get the fire out here? Are we doing this? No, I wasn't I listening. Mean, and we usually make, what, like 300 cones an hour, so it's going to have to be a little bit faster than that. And then watch out for the sneeze guard. You're going to put it underneath. Don't chop the ice cream in half here. What do you say? Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I think we had to work on your manners. <laughs> well, he should be thanking me. <laughs> Dogs eat for free here. Every dog gets a pup cup. And did you see the size of the dog, Ted? Is this too much for the dog? The dog weighs three pounds. So. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Wait, you're thanking the dog for the dog service? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he likes it. Oh, he might be a vegan. I made a pup cone <laughs> for the dog, and I don't think the dog likes my ice cream. Our, our very own Dairy King uh, joins us now. Hello, Ted. Hello. Um, how was that? Uh, it was a challenge. Yeah. I've never served anything before. I know. We can tell. Um, <laughs> your, um, my favorite, or there's a couple things. My fa one of my favorites, though, is your aggressive thank you for coming. <laughs> well, at first I was like, thank me. <laughs> no, you thank the customer, Ted. You thank the customer. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, chocolate's bad for dogs, Ted. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, true. I keep I keep checking my phone for the schedule because they said I got the job, but uh, I haven't been scheduled. No, yet. and I also also at the beginning of the piece I I literally laughed out loud when when I think it was you or your trainer said don't hit anything, especially kids. It's like <laughs> the fact that she was worried about that with you should have been an indication that probably not the right job for you. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, it was a fun truck to drive. Yeah. It, uh, uh -huh. it's old. Yeah. Well, it's most ice cream trucks, yeah, sure. are. Sure, sure. Uh, the, uh, the folks there at Minnesota Ice Cream, we've done a story with them before, all joking aside for just a second because they were nice enough to let our buffoonery in there, and I don't mean you, kind of, but, uh, they really do have great ice cream there, don't they, Ted? Oh, great ice cream. They're great people. Katie and Ronnie, I mean, uh, just just great people, great sense of humor. Uh, we, we enjoyed our time with them, and, you know, they were willing to play. Shut down for, yeah, willing yeah. to play, shut down everything. And Did that dog finish that ice cream? I was wondering that, no, too. No, I think they took it away. <laughs> uh, and, and I did like at the end that she was like, uh, maybe the dog is vegan. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> that was the, when the the cone was larger than the dog, yeah. Ted. Yeah. 
Ted Johnson, everybody, thank you. Thank you. Go uh, support Minnesota Nice Cream in Minneapolis. They really are. They're great. They're great folks, and it's fun. It's a great thing to take your family to. They have a nice little outdoor space, too. My dear friends, we're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Mother's Day is next weekend, and if you're starting to plan uh, something for mom, how about this? How about making her a delicious breakfast or a little brunch dish instead of going out? Quiche is always a great idea. It's delicious. It's easy. Our friend Travis from Red Cow is going to show you, us, a great quiche recipe that you can do. All right. Good morning, Jason. This morning, we're making quiche for Mother's Day. Moms love when you cook and the good news is we're not going to make a real big mess in our kitchen so we're going to start out we have some hash browns and then right here we've got some whipped brie all we did here is we took some brie cheese cut the rind off of that and put it in the mixer whipped it up so you get this really really nice creamy mixture um if you want to be real classy you could also throw in uh some cheese whiz or something like that too so. Um, anything to make it delicious. Go ahead and put that right in our pie shell. Spread that around. Get a really, really nice layer. You want to make sure you layer it nice and tight so all of our eggs don't run through when we get in there. Cool. All right, next, we've got our whipped eggs. Um, already whipped them up here for us. This is sun-dried tomatoes. And spinach to keep us nice and strong. Moms love spinach because they know it's good for us. Whip that up. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. I'm just going to go ahead and drop that right into the pan there. Nice and full. Spread that around. You don't want to overfill it, because then eggs will run all over your mom's oven. I'm gonna go ahead and take that, pop it in the oven, 300 degrees for about an hour. Look at that, nice and hot, golden brown. All right, so let's go ahead and give that a little cut. Uh, cut it in about six to eight pieces. That nice layer of potatoes, some eggs, and spinach, tomato. Go ahead and put that on there. Made us up a really nice little salad. Real simple for brunch. You don't want to get too crazy. Just a little bit of lemon and olive oil. Some nice greens. And finish that off with a little shaved Parmesan right there. All right, nice little breakfast. I've also got some fresh fruit that we can serve that with. Or if you're coming to my house for Mother's Day, we're probably gonna have bacon along with that, so. Good news is I got some right over here. There we go. Happy Mother's Day. Give that a try. Mm. Max. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. We gave them an assignment. I love the folks at Red Cow, Red Rabbit. We said, hey, this is something easy that anybody can make. That's easy. And it's, trust me, it's delicious. That brie, you can use that trick for a variety of things you want to add brie to. Put the brie in the mix, in the mixer, and it adds, I, I, I've had quiche before, it adds a nice little element to it. Or you could always take your, uh, your mom to Red Cow or Red Rabbit, uh, make a reservation. Local, support local. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Like the mean says, 
the last day of April, which means tomorrow it's gonna be May. A little in sync from the year 2000. Hi. Oh. Good year. TRL years. Oh man, yeah. I loved that video. You were what? Uh, playing on jungle gyms in 2000. You were 10. Ten. Yeah. Yes. Oh gosh. You I were playing on jungle gyms, and Jeff and I were here. I was, I was learning to dance. I was running errands for Robin Robinson and buying her Frosties at Wendy's. <laughs> There's a story that I can't really tell you on television. Find Time to see what you have to say about the show. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag. Here we go. You've got mail. The first comment is from Jill. Hi, Jill. She says, thank you for being the down-to-earth dude you are. I know when I turn your show on, it's going to be entertaining, fun, and predictable. I've deleted my other daytime shows because your show trumps them every time. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's very sweet. And, and Jeff picked that email. Here's the deal. Um, you know, we purposely I say this a lot because people wonder, oh, you don't talk about this. You don't talk about that. You didn't talk about the trial. This shows, I'll say it for the 80th time, this show's purpose. We're not a new show. We are, it's supposed to be an escape for you. You know, <laughs> we're, we're supposed to be an escape. Just because we don't talk about things, certain things, doesn't mean we don't care, but our show is built, built to last. What was it? What were those tools, Jeff? The Sears, built to last. No, that's Ford Tough. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, our show's built to be fun and to give you guys an escape, you right, know? Right, Next, Lynn says, I binge watched episodes of your show today and I have to say you just make me smile. And I really need to play pull tabs with you someday, uh, anywhere. Just saying, of course, of course, I'm mm -hmm. I'm always down. I had to explain to my mom because you know she hadn't played uh, heard of pull tabs until she moved here. So I had to go through the difference between hard copy pull tabs and e tabs, and when you play e tabs and when you play hard copy tabs. The only time I've ever won pull tabs is playing. With you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you bought the ticket. <laughs> well, because I love you. Yep. But no, there's a whole strategy. Mm -hmm. Up next, a comment from Jennifer. After Kendall talked about the 90s fashion trend, butterfly clips. She says, tell Kendall that butterfly clips are back. The kids of several friends are wearing them. This makes me so happy. What are they again? They're like the little clips that you put in your hair that originally they were shaped like little miniature butterflies and then they were kind of anything and you just called them butterfly clips. Oh, okay. But you'd put them like right here. Yeah, so I would have no, I, that's why I don't know. I would never, I, I didn't have any reason you to wear them. You would see, well, I'm not just. I mean, I am a well-rounded homosexual, so I should have <laughs> worn them, yeah. Next, a comment about producer Ted's latest streaming pick. Earlier this week, he recommended the Netflix show Formula One Drive to Survive. Uh, it follows the high stakes world of Formula One racing. Well, Mary had something to say. Hi, Mary. Ted is right about Formula One Drive to Survive. I loathe NASCAR. I'm not a gearhead at all, but this show is so good. My husband and I watched together, and I couldn't wait for the third season to come out. We watched season three in just a few days. I haven't, I look, I, I am going to watch it. I have a list. I have a. I'm trying to get through some other things. Are you going to watch it? Just watch one. Let's do this. Okay. Let's right. both watch one episode. Um, Jordan does watch it, and he really likes it. So I'm one of those that, like, I'll come in the room and watch a little bit of it with him. But I, I think I'd like it. But I, like, Because you and I are both not gearheads, it would be a great segment. And again, five yourself. days a week, girl. We got we got five, five hours a week to fill. So <laughs> let's watch it. Speak for yourself. I'm quite the gearhead. You're right. And I know all about the NFL draft. All about like it. Like that Mac Jones from Alabama. Where did he wind up? Do you honestly know where he wound up? Patriots. What? Patriots. Patriots. Oh, look, Tyler. Tyler says 15 words a year. Mm -hmm. There's 16 he right there. He stayed up late last night for that. Like for the NFL draft. Yeah. So Next, excited. Scott has a comment about producer Ted. <laughs> Don't we all? He says, Ted and Noah Wiley look like twins. So let's, we made a graphic here. Let's look at this. You know what? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Now, personally, I think Ted is a better looking guy. But I love Ted. I wonder if we gave him spectacles if he would look even more like I don't him. even know. Does Ted wear glasses? Do we know that? Does he wear contacts? I don't know. Yeah, yes. he does. Yes. I think, Ted, I think Ted would look good in glasses. Let's I like those round ones, the Harry Potter glasses. Yeah. Anyway, finally, many of you loved our interview with Minnesota mom turned TikTok star. Oh. 
Amber, right there she is, who's known for making Minnesota salads. Brenda Sue, I love a two-name name, says, hilarious, I got TikTok just for her and you. Thank you. Remember, you can find us on TikTok. Our handle Kling! is Jason Show TV. And there's our other accounts as well. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for Jason Show TV. And for, don't forget our personal accounts as well. We're always wacky on those. Kendall Mark, right? Kendall mm -hmm. Mark, search mm -hmm. for her. And then just my name, Jason Matheson. Mm -hmm. You can see pictures of Dexter and Mr. Big and whatever they're doing, which right now, sleeping. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. We're going to take a break, friends. We'll be back to wrap things up and our bubblegum goodbye question when we return. Stay right there. I can't, I don't have time to show you anything, but they just said my dogs were sleeping and I just got a text message from home. Yeah, the show's on and they're sleeping. <laughs> they out. They're, they, they're out. Mm -hmm. Should I try talking to them and see if they wake up? Sure. Dexter, Mr. Big, Bubs. I call him Bubs. Dexter's nickname is Bubs. Wake up, Dex. Anyway, that probably didn't work. Mm -mm. Don't forget, sign up and be a part of our virtual audience. We'd love to see you. Go to the Jason Show Facebook page. Jason Show TV and click the link we posted. Sign up for a certain day. We do it usually Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and you will be a part of the show. We appreciate it. We can't wait for the day when we can welcome you back into the studio. Yeah, so, and we're working on something fun. I'm just gonna say this, we can't tell you. Can I say it? A hint. We're working on something fun, and we, Jeff and I saw the designs yesterday. We're working on something fun that if you're part of the virtual audience, you might just get. We'll be right back, back in a moment. I didn't, that wasn't a hint, was it? Happy Friday, my dear friends. So I got an update from home. Mm -hmm. Talking to the dogs via TV did not work. They didn't move an inch. No. And they're right by the television, that proves. Does it prove anything, or does it just mean that they don't listen to you? Both. <laughs> Here we go. You yeah. ready? Yeah. Bubble gum good goodbye. We got it out of that machine right over there. Hey, Kendall, what's the biggest misconception people have about you? Ladies first. I'm sure there are a bunch that I just can't think of, but I think the one that when people used to come to our show that was said the most was like either my height or like my the physical look of me. I think people, when they see you on TV, they, oh, you're a lot shorter than I thought. Or like, oh, I thought you'd be this, I thought you'd be that. It's usually about something about what I look like. The physical. Yeah. Okay. Which is, I mean, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, you see me. Yeah. <laughs> but, so that's probably it. I can probably think of a better one, but that's the first one. I no, it's good. Mind. There's, I have a two-parter. Mm -hmm. People have heard me say this before. Again, when people are here, um, I'm more of an introvert than people think that I am. Um, I had a kind of, no, no joke, don't mean to bring the party down, but at the state fair about six years ago, I kind of had a panic attack. We were mm -hmm. doing kind of a meet and greet and mm -hmm. I was with my friend Alexis. And I, I, I had a little panic attack and I had to, Alexis took me back and I'm a, a lot shyer in person. Like I, I'm not good at small talk. Like right. I can say hello, hello, right. but I don't know what to do after that, which mm -hmm. surprises people, mm -hmm. but see in this position, I have control of the conversation. Right. If you take me out of this environment, I'm like a little animal, you know, and I don't know what to do. The right. other one is I think people that don't watch the show on the regular, know nothing about me, have a shallow base of knowledge. They think that I'm a moron and they don't think that I have any interest other than Britney Spears and what's on HBO. When the truth of the matter is, I think I, I would shock people by what I, I you know, mm -hmm. what I'm interested in. I'm a political person. I, right. I read a lot, you know, I, I think that would surprise people. Yeah. That, that's I'm a good not one. as quite goofy mm -hmm. in real life as I am here. Yeah, for know. sure. I think I get that a lot too. Yes. Like the dumb blonde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't mind the Whatever. underestimating though. That's fine. Because yeah. then when I say, hey, where did Mac Jones end up? People are surprised. I was actually very surprised that you pulled that, pulled any name out. Yeah. After we started with I watched, NBA. I watched a little bit of it. It was in Cleveland. You did. You watched some, you watched some of the NFL draft? I did. That's Again, cool. see? Even you're shocked and you know me well. I, I really am. Yeah. I TiVo the Sunday morning shows that surprises people all the time. I'm We're a nerds. TiVo. I, I what am I 80? What do you 87? call it? 87. What? what? I don't you, know. I don't know. Tomorrow or no, we're not on tomorrow. Monday. 
Leslie, are we on tomorrow? No. Leslie Miller joins us for wine ideas for mom. <laughs> My mom too. My friends, thank you for watching. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you that you're doing it wrong. Enjoy the weather. We'll see you Monday.